I feel the spirit already. Can you feel the spirit? It's a God is good. All the time. Yeah, that's this morning, Jehovah Jireh. God is our provider. He'll provide yes, he for you. Yeah. 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 Some, uh, the rent was short a little bit. God provided for you. You ever been sick and God provided for you? Yeah. You better say it. I tell you, God will provide for you. Yeah. I want to use for a text. First John, starting in the third chapter. I want to use for a text. First John, starting at the third chapter. Beginning at the fourth verse. So again, that's First John, the third chapter. Beginning at the fourth verse. Amen. And Amen. ending at the twelfth verse. It's customary in a new beginning church to once you get it, you stand or say Amen. We don't want to leave anybody behind, so that's why we want you to see it for yourself. Yes. If you see it for yourself, you make more attempt to believe it. So again, I would come from 1 John, the third chapter. If you need help, you can't find it and say, hey, somebody help. If you need a Bible, Mr. Benison, if I can show, bring you a Bible. So again, I would come from 1 John, the third chapter, reading starting the fourth through the twelfth verse. And it reads, Whosoever committeth sin transgresses also the law, for sin is a transgression of the law. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you, for he doth righteousness and righteous, even as he is righteous. Verse 8. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested and he might destroy the works of the devil. 9. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. I'm still in 1 John, the third chapter. Uh, verse 10. And the, in this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil, whoso doth not righteousness is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother, for this is the message that he heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of the wicked one, and slew his brother, and wherefore slew he him, because his works were evil, as his brother's righteous. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. Hey, Father, I just want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak in front of you again. If you have a gift, like you sing in a choir, the more you sing, the better you get. If you preach in the pulpit, the more you preach, the better you get. Whatever you do for God, do it more. You get better and better and better. So I encourage you, saints, to whatever God gives you to do, just do it. Do it more. You get better and better. Again, I'm coming from 1 John, the third chapter, 11th verse. We're we'll read it again. For this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that you should love one another. The pastor always speaks about love. Love one another. See someone in need, you love them, you help them. Verse 12, not as Cain, who was that wicked one, and slew his brother, and were pursued he him, because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteousness. It's like that today in, in the world today. The evil or the wickedness tries to overcome the righteous. But if you're saying to God, you're nothing to worry about. Just keep on keeping on. I want to use for a subject today, time for change. The subject is time for change. Yeah. We've been going through a lot of things in your life throughout the week, but things uh -huh. always change. Something always constant. If you look at the news, for example, look at the school shooting back in Florida. We had 17 people who were just killed recently. Back in Michigan, they had their son come in and gun down two personnel just last Friday. His mother now is getting close to home. Just uh, this this uh, this year, within nine weeks, we've had a total of 12 school shootings. I tell you, it's time for change. Oh, but last month, it's happening in my own family. Uh, last month, I had a, a cousin. He was 54 years old. He was found home dead. And then just last week, I had a brother-in-law. He was found at home uh, on the floor. Not dead. He's still alive. He's nice you. He was found. I said it to say, there's a lot of things going on in the life today. We need change. We need to get our God 
we got to get right for God. We need to change. Amen. 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 Every time you look on the news, it's always something negative. You got to filter yourself to your mind and say what's good and what's bad. Just keep your mind on what's right, on God. I tell you, it's, it's time for change. And everybody talks about change. If you're married or something, the husband want to change the wife. But I mean, I'm going to tell you, or vice versa, the wife wants to change the husband. Uh, quit trying to change other people's life. If you want to change somebody, change yourself. Amen. Say that. Trying to change everybody. You can't change everything. You can't change the killings. You can't change the stealings. But you can change yourself. The way you change yourself is to get into the Bible and read, hear God's word. But if you do happen to change your husband or for a wife for a little bit, they start nagging into something. What's going to happen? They're going to change back. As soon as life's troubles come on, they're going to change back from pressure. Like I said, everything in life is about change. You know, you look outside and it's was wintertime, springtime now. You know, the seasons change. You got little bitty babies there. They're small now. They grow up. They grow up. They get old, get a job, they retire. And you know, get older and older and older, you get sick. And eventually, you die. That's all the changes. Some changes are good, some changes are bad. But you know, I said everything changes. But according to Hebrews 13 and 8, it says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. In other words, everything changes, but Jesus doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and all right. He was the beginning. He was Alpha and Omega. He's there. I said, you might say, I can't change because you had a bad upbringing. You might be way out there and say, you might come out and say, hey, my daddy was a, a pimp. My mother was a prostitute. But I tell you, still, they can change. Everybody Amen. can change. Amen. Amen. You know, you got brothers and sisters in prison, had your whole life in prison. If you're a child here and your 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 father is in prison, you can still change. Just because some of your, your mother did or your father did, you can still change. So it like what they did, you change. Just talk to the person who's about change. Jesus Christ, he'll help you change. Amen. Pray for change. Yes. I'm, I'm never now going to Acts uh, 9 and 1, talking about change. You know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts. What it talks about is Paul. You know, you, know, you heard about Paul on Damascus Road, how he changed, you know. Oh, I was yeah. going out, Paul was going out, out going out trying to prosecute the uh, Christians. You know, Paul, like, he likes some people today. You don't like Christians, right? You know, if you prosecute them, somebody could be in your neighborhood, somebody would bring up the word of God, you say, I don't want to hear that about God, you know, I don't want to hear that guy. You stuff, better you know. say it. But Paul, he was a person who prosecuted and killed him. He went out to, he was, had a high official job. He wanted to kill people. That's what he wanted to do. It's just some of us. But you know, don't worry about those people out there who do things against you right now. If you got God on your side, that could be against you. Amen. So, I mean, you better I'm say it. I'm the main tab to give you a visual, so I want you to know kind of what I'm talking about. Am I just making this up? This is in Acts, the main tab, sorry, the first uh, verse. I'm going to paraphrase a little bit. It says, As Saul yet was breathing out, threatening and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, and went up to a high priest, and desired him letters to the masses, to the synagogues, that he has found in his way. But his basically was trying to say, Paul wanted to destroy and kill Christians. He said, Any of this way, that's any of this way, that might be you or I, any Christians, you want to find so many people to serve God and destroy those people. But anyway, it says, Whether they were men, or women, you might bring down violence against Jerusalem. Otherwise, if you're a man, woman, or child, God will come against you. So these little babies back here, don't think about it. God will come in, they tell you to come against those too. So just raise up and train your kids the way they should go. They get old, they won't depart from them. Amen. Verse 3, and as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly, yeah. suddenly, suddenly, suddenly around about him a light from heaven. Yeah. Uh -huh. And he fell to the earth and heard the voice saying to him, Saw, saw, why persecutest thou me? Yeah. And Saul said, Why art thou the Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecuted. It is hard for thee to kick against the bricks. You know, something pricking you, right? You can't prick against it. You got to basically change. If God put in your heart, say, change, do this, that. You can't fight against it. It's going to happen regardless whether you want or not. Say that. Just succeed to it. And verse 6, And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what, what, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said to him, Arise. And go into the city, and it shall be told thee what to do. Sometimes God, God will call you to do something in life. He may say, "Hey, Miss D, I want you to go somewhere, right? Go here." But He will give you all instructions. He give you a best of Jesus. Go here. Go to the town of the state of Mississippi. Go there. I got something to do in Mississippi. When you visit, I don't know what it is. Just wait on me. Have faith. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
verse 7, And the men which were journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing uh -huh. the verse, but they saw no one. So Paul, this was a personal experience. It all happened to Paul. Everybody probably thought he was crazy, but happened. Sometimes you're by yourself with God. He teaches you to you. Sometimes it's best not to be around people all the time. Amen. 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 And when his eyes were open, he saw no man, but they led him by the hand and brought him to Damascus. And he was there three days. And while he was there for three days, he had no food or no drink. Mm. So even everybody here today, most of the Christians, they might not realize it, but they probably had a, a Damascus road. When I say you had a Damascus road, it might be once upon a time in your life and you was doing something you shouldn't have been doing. That's why. Right. converted. And when you get converted, like sometimes you convert, your, your name changes. Like I said, uh, mm. You guys have been in the street a long time. You know, you got, you guess you can do stuff you want to do. You're out in the club and everything. Have a certain name for you, you know. Uh, for example, uh, yes, some people, they might call some guy a chocolate thunder. Some ladies they might call him a cupcake. Cupcake. That kind of smile. You know, it's a street name, you know. So if all these people are if all these people are they don't know who you are. You got a street name for you. <laughs> and then some of your Christians there, right? You know, you shouldn't go to clubs not doing that type of stuff. But if you are, they shouldn't be calling you by your street name. When you convert it, you get a good name. If you're converted, they shouldn't be calling you a child of God. Yes, yes. Like I'm talking about change here. Everything. Amen. A lot of things change. Change is pretty much constant. You know, back in uh, Ecclesiastes, you know, you got Proverbs, and next to Proverbs, you got Ecclesiastes. It talks about change. And you guys probably tired of hearing about change right now. No, I think Amen. when it comes to change, I think we all need to change. Amen. You might think you've been in the church for a long time doing the right thing. Sometimes I tell you, you need to change. Just like the seasons change, we all need to change. Amen. I change. I'm making change. No, I'm just, uh, just this morning, wife, she bought me a little uh, handkerchief right here. Right? Just let me know the first thing. <laughs> <laughs> all change, you know. I got water up here. Why? But I see that to say. Yeah, small changes make a big difference, you know. Amen. Small changes make a big difference. For example, if you got a big ship or something, like a big old ship, right? You don't have a little rudder that guides it. You make a small change and direct just one small increment. Yeah. By the time the end of the, about a couple of miles, be way, way off. Otherwise, I'm trying to keep you on track by these changes. So change is big. Take small steps for change. Amen. So I tell you, it's time for change, church folks. Time for change, Christian folks. I say, when I say, uh, when we were talking about church folks, Bible folks, you know, we got some people that go to church, you know, they go to church, they read the Bible and everything, but they don't have faith, you know, religious folks. That's not enough year to do the right, but they have faith. Remember, uh, Nick Davis, right, you know? <laughs> I mean, I mean, the giant of the now, Nick Davis, he had faith, he was a ruler, he had a lot of faith, right? He did a lot of things. He actually knew the law. He like some uh, some of us Christians here today. We know the word. We do the word. We go. We go to Bible study. We go to church. We go to prayer meetings. We do all kinds of stuff. We do the right thing. But it's because you know the word. I mean, you might not do it. I, ch I challenge you. It's because you know the word. You got to actually do it. You got to exercise your faith. You got to use what God gives you. Use your gift. Use your talent. If God gives you a gift or a talent, if you don't use it. What it is? You lose it. So I'm in, right now I'm in John 3, I'm just paraphrasing, so I give you, that's what I'm going to. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the third chapter, give you a little, little history about it. I want you to see it. I just want you to see it for yourself. So I'm in John, third chapter. We're talking about, you know, Nicodemus, who was a Pharisee. I was mentioned earlier, he was a, a prominent, prominent guy. He was a powerful person. I read it. It said, there was a man of the name of the Pharisees, named Nicodemus, a ruler of Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher. So when I first read this, I said, he came to me by night, or we came to him by night. Why did he come by night? You know, a lot of things happen at night, or say maybe good or bad, I don't know why he came at night. I just say maybe he didn't want his friends to see him, you know, I don't know. A lot of things, bad things happen at night, but I don't know if he came to Jesus by night. But one good thing about it, he, he came. He came. Right? Yeah. When you come, you yeah. come. That's it. And he, he, uh, he acknowledged Jesus. He, he said, Rabbi. You know, some people called, they said, man, I'm sorry. He acknowledged Jesus that he was greater than him. He said, Rabbi, give him reverence and give reverence to God. Right. He said, No man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. 
Because things will tell you you got to be born again. I mean, you got to change your life, change your wicked ways. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time in his mother's womb? Yeah. Can he? I don't know. I hate to be a mother to have a born man trying to go back. <laughs>
Christmas time, Thanksgiving time right here, and then the change you made, it, it went away, you know? You forgot about it. I'm talking about the internal type change inside, you know? The kind of change you probably can't do for yourself, the kind of change God got to do it for you. Amen. You got to pray for change. That's it. Yes. I mean, Romans, the 12th chapter, uh -huh. only a couple verses here. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourself, your bodies, for living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2, and be not conformed of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So I want you to change your mind. You change your mind, you change the circumstances around you. And what goes into your body is sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Watch out when you go out and uh, watch the television and stuff, right? You know, and uh, watch these all kind of bad movies. And yeah. Watch out the company you keep people right. cursing around and everything. You know? Amen. Believe it or not, that stuff gets into your system. Yes. 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 You might have some stuff that went in your body a long, long, long time ago, maybe 30 years ago, but right, it might come up. up. It'd be latent back in your somewhere in your, in your bone somewhere latent. <laughs> 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 it'd come out. It'd come out, I tell you. you say have, it. have a meal for it. <laughs> but I said that, like this. I'm it's telling you, it's time for change. I want you to change. I want you to change. If you want to change, pray for uh Pray for change. Pray for change. Amen. You probably can't do it for yourself. I'm going to you some people change. Amen. You might change back. I want you to just. Pray for change. Yeah, you probably sitting here saying, uh, I don't uh, drink. I'm, I'm married. I don't fornicate. I don't look at pornography. I don't do none of those bad things. You're not talking to me. I tell you, those same people we're talking about, they don't do none of those bad things. But that can be a busybody, you know. It can be a person, you know, everybody has a business, you know, you call somebody on the phone, you wonder what's going on. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, okay. We have a lot of things going on. Oh, we have, we have not do it with any church, but I think we have gossip in some churches yeah. right now. The gossip you know, Sister society did this last night, did that, you know. So we have a lot of problems, you know. I'm not trying to beat you down with the Bible. I'm just trying to remind you, let you know what's going on. Trying to help you change for the better. Yeah. It's not only yeah. for you, this is for me, me too. Amen. Because back in, uh, I say everybody has issues. The preacher up in the pulpit, he's preaching good, everybody right, preaching good. They have problems too. Say oh, that. I found out about it. You have a preacher up in the pulpit. God will help uh, help you too, right? You know, you say hey, so right? They come back and help you. So I'm, I'm learning as we speak. I'm learning, learning, and learning. That's right. Amen. But in Matthew, the seventh chapter and the fifth verse, uh -huh. it says, "Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye." What? Yeah. What? Yeah. 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 What? You got some problems in your life. You got you some, some, some different up. version of you. Man, you got something in your your life. You got sin in your life. I can tell you to get sin out of my life. You know, yeah, get so. right first. Yeah, okay. Go to God, go to God, go to God in prayer. Amen. I said, I know today is, I want to be before you long. Somebody, if I got the stomach growling, pray for a lunch, or I don't know about you, but I don't eat that much. I'm okay. <laughs> but I just want to talk to you today briefly about just three different points. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I just want to talk to you about three different points. My okay. points are, I want to talk to you about stop beating people down with the Bible. You know, yeah, yeah. Say that. Wait a minute. I mean, I think you need to stop beating people down with the Bible. Don't worry, you're here again. Don't worry about it. I'll be catching you. <laughs> <laughs> the next thing is try to get out of your ungodly relationships. You know, if you're in a relationship that's ungodly, if you're a Christian, you probably need to get out of that. But it's not going to be easy, but get out of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The last point I'm going to cover is spiritual strongholds. You know, spiritual strongholds is something. You might have it within your, your system, you want to get better, but you can't do it. You know, back in addiction or something, you, you want to get better. You're a single woman dating this man. You want to let him go, but you can't do it because he's, he's in your mind, your body, you know. But anyway, change. When I say people beat down people with the Bible, you know, like I said, we're Christians here. We have good intentions, you know. If you go talk to you guys, your elderly your grandmother or grandfather, you talk to that person, it goes to like a family gathering or something, and they'll beat you down with the Bible to tell you about stuff you need to be doing, you know. Some young kids don't really want to hear it, but I guess you got to hear it, but it's the way you tell people what you got to talk about. My man. For example, I say, stop beating people down with the Bible. Be correct someone. Correct someone out of love. Like the mothers here, when they correct girl, good for the girls, but they correct them because they love them. They want to make it better for their future. So you correct people, Christian folks, who Bible folks, correct people out of love. Amen. I said, I mentioned earlier about it. You got to like, the gay people, right? They get beat up really, really bad. You got the straight people beat them up. If you beat him up, and church folks beat him up too. 
As a matter of fact, I went on vacation just recently. I was down in Tucson, Arizona. I had this elderly uh, friend of ours. She's about 85 years old. I guess she found out that she had a, a gay, I guess it was a gay niece or gay nephew. He came to her, you know, like old, old people, young people would confide him, and old people, he invited her. And he said, hey, Granny, I'm gay. And she's a church folks. She knows the Bible. She said, well, I don't know what she said, but it's out of my mind. She said, ooh, you, you're nasty. You don't do that kind of stuff, you know. The Bible says a man should never a labor man, a woman should never a woman. I said, and she did all she did out of good intent. But when you correct someone, correct them out of love. Out of love. Amen. Out of love. You find that proverb. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking about it. Now we got, uh, I'll talk about the scripture about men and men, and women and women. It's found in Leviticus 18 and 22. Mm -hmm. I said, when you find someone doing something wrong, it's your godly duty as a Christian to tell them about it or correct them. That's the way you do it. As the pastor always speaks about, do something in love. If you do it in love, you're okay. Mm -hmm. Like I said, wow. sometimes when you tell people something, you might tell them in a crowd or something, you might embarrass someone. If you tell somebody something, don't try to correct them in a crowd. Try to put them aside. Mm -hmm. You don't want to embarrass nobody. Some people correct people because they're right and you're wrong. They say, hey, I'm right, you're wrong. <laughs> that's, that's bad motives. Don't correct them on that basis. You better you stay do, in. Uh, just, which one to do is when you correct someone is the ultimate goal should be to improve that person. Right. The ultimate, ultimate goal mm -hmm. is to lead that person to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A, a good example about, I guess, uh, within the Bible, it's found in 2 Samuel, you know, Samuel, 2 Samuel, it's a like group of 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, and Kings, or in the New Testament, it talks about, you know, David, King David, you know, a powerful person, had a, a lot of power, you know. I guess one time he wasn't, he was, when we're supposed to be, he tell us beautiful, beautiful, he tell us beautiful woman. <laughs> and you're like, uh, like some men, you know, you know, you see things uh, that you really want, you can't have right, you know. So I guess uh, what, what he did was, I guess uh, he he wanted her, right, and next he, he noticed her, right? he and her got together, you know, you why you know, he was, uh, you know, he pulled back, he killed the ride, you know. What he did was, was wrong. Totally wrong. Got to do is go to me too. Uh, second Samuel, second Samuel, and 12 chapter. Just want to get a reference of what I'm talking about. You know, kind of what I'm talking about in the Bible. Second Samuel, the second, no, excuse me, says second Samuel, the 12th chapter. Get what I'm talking about. I want to get the story first about so I'm in 2 Samuel 12 chapter. So I can I just went to you your paraphrase, but I might miss it and for it for you, right? You know, what I'm trying to do is get to you you can see it for yourself. So if I didn't say something clearly or something, when you go home tonight and you re read it again, you know. That's also kind of uh, by newspaper versus internet, you can read it again. So I'm in 2 Samuel 12 chapter from the first through the seventh verse. You kind of know what I was going to if you have it. Anyway, it says, And the Lord sent Nathan unto David, and he came unto him and said unto him, There were two men in one city, and one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceedingly many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing save one little ewe lamb, which he had bought and nourished up and grew up together with him and with his children, and did eat of his own meat and drink of his own cup and lay in his bosom uh -huh. and was with him as a daughter. And, he, and there came a traveler unto the rich man, and he spread and take of his own flock of his own herd to dress for that wafer man that was coming to him. But took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that was come up. Right. And David was, he said, verse 5, David was, and David's anger was great killed against this man. And he said to Nathan, as the Lord liveth, the man that hath done this thing shall surely die. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. And Nathan said unto David, Thou art the man. You are right. So I guess you know, so he was, uh, that was a good way to correct someone right here. David wasn't, he wasn't mad about it. We were, I mean, he wasn't mad about it. He knew it was him. You know, so you correct someone, he corrected this guy out of love. You know, but when he corrected someone, I guess he corrected him out of love. I don't think he corrected him the next day he did it. He probably waited a little bit of time, and I think he waited like a year or something before he corrected King David. No, David was the king that party to kill him, right? So he waited about a, a year or so. He waited a long point of time. When you correct someone, 
If we pray someone, you need to go to God yourself first, go to God in prayer. Amen. Go to God, go to God in prayer. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Because you might have a problem. Sometimes you can pray about something. We're talking about change. Pray about change. Pray about God or something. God can change that person already. He might need you to go to him and talk and speak for him. Amen. So before you go to somebody, go to somebody and pray. I said, prayer is always a good good thing. God always talks about. We all talk about prayer. Prayer old oh, people talking about the prayer changes things. Mm -hmm. Have you tried it? I mean prayer does change this thing. You gotta do it. Mm -hmm. And you gotta get used to it. You should have a, a prayer line. I know sometimes I, I typically try to pray every day, but if I forget to pray one day, saying something's missing out of my life, you know. It's almost like eating uh, eating food every drink of water. If you don't eat or drink, you're missing something. So I'm challenging you, Christian, just pray every day if you can. What is this like? It's like before danger gets there, it might warn you before it comes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So right now, it's like so just keep praying in your life. Right now, I'm going to uh, Ezekiel about talk about uh, warning people. You go to go go with me now to Ezekiel. You got Proverbs and uh, Isaiah and Isaiah and Ezekiel. I'm trying to talk to you about how to warn some people. I'm not, I'm not just telling you. I'm trying to show you. For example, you got a got two little beautiful babies back here. You see them playing out on the side of the curb, so they're just all the clip. You're going to actually warn them, I think, right? You don't warn them, you try to tell them, hey, what's going on, you know? You don't warn them because you want to try to warn them because, you know, you don't want to see nothing happen to those little girls. That's best sometimes you see uh, brothers and sisters that are ready to fall all over, right? You know, you got to warn them. You got to you tell their parents. For example, if uh, some of your sisters or brothers came to see a kid doing something, playing with a gun or something, two year old, and they say, oh, I see them playing with a gun, I didn't tell the mother about it. So you got to warn them. You have them save people. Amen. Again, we're going to that. Ezekiel is after Proverbs and Isaiah and Lamentations. Let's talk about warning uh, people. Uh, what is Ezekiel what? Uh, Ezekiel, the third chapter Amen. and the 17th verse. Mm -hmm. So Ezekiel, the third chapter and the 17th verse. What I'm trying to do is... Uh, as you know, it's, what I'm saying is not uh, of me, it's from the Bible. We're talking about warning people. It give you some uh, ways or methods. We don't want to warn people. It gives you ways to uh, warn people. I'll read it to you. It says, And it came to pass at the end of seven days that the word, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, talking to Ezekiel, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, I'm in Ezekiel, third chapter. So that the 17th verse through 21st verse, verse. Okay. it says, 17, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word of thy mouth and give them warning for me, which I have warned you to. Then I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor shalt to warn the wicked from the wicked way. To save his life, that same wicked man shall die in iniquity, but his blood will I require a little hand. We're saying this like, if you don't want somebody, the blood might be on your hand. I have a lot of problems in my life myself. You know, I don't have enough problems to have other people's blood on my hand. Verse 19, it says, Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from the wickedness, nor from the wicked way, he shall die in an iniquity, but he shall but has delivered thy soul. And verse 20, Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die, because thou hast not given him warning. <coughs> shall die in sin, and his righteousness which he had done shall not be remembered, but his blood will I require thy hand. Verse 21. Nevertheless, if thou warn a righteous man that the righteousness sin not, and he doth not sin, he surely he shall surely live, because he is warned, also he hath delivered thy soul. So see, it makes a difference when you warn people, you see your brother or sister. I mean, warn them, let them know. But you know, you have them, the pastor say, laying up timbers in heaven for yourself. Okay. <laughs> also, you're saving your soul, too. Mm -hmm. so, so, I mean, just, you got to just do the right thing. Sometimes being a Christian or being a church folk or, or Pharisee is, is a hard thing to do. Some things you got to do, you got to do it. Like I said, you got a problem with your kids sometimes, you got to just discipline them, whether you want to or not. And I'm talking about eating. Beat people up like Christian Bible thumbers, it would beat people with the Bible. Let's go to we still talk about beating now. Sometimes we have uh, people beat other people up. In other words, uh, husbands, stop beating your wives. Wives, stop beating your husbands. Children, yeah, children, stop beating your parents. And what I'm saying about this, I'm not talking about 
physical beating, right? You don't give a mental beating. You know, sometimes you can go home and talk bad shit about my father. You beat him up with words too. You know, when I was coming up in school back in the eighties or something, had a saying that was had a saying that says, uh, yeah, "I'll six stones to break my bones, but words never hurt." I mean, that's not true for me because you've been in a relationship right. for a long, long time, right? You know, so your husband might leave you, your beats might leave you, and it words, words you hurt. Yeah, yeah. just if you had an argument within your life, brothers, mm -hmm. man, wife, child, child, let the sun go down upon you right. when you're mad. My second topic I want to talk about for change is ungodly relationships. You know, you're a Christian, right? You're in a relationship. And uh, it's, not, it's not right, not according to me, but it's not right according to the Bible. It's not me saying it. It's not Pastor Bowman saying it. Or Pastor Bowman saying it. It's just saying the word of God. And the reason God says these type of things in the Bible, he sees farther down the road. He sees farther down the road way, way far farther than we all can Amen. see. He's trying to protect you. So if you do things the right way, it all come out past. Just like uh, I was a mechanic years ago. I did a little mechanic work every now and then. But uh, if you have a car, your car is broke down. So you got a, a bad, four bad tires. You go out and just fix the one bad tire, the other three bad tires right now. <laughs> the base is going to go bad. So you want to do it right the first time. Be done with it. So do it right. Do it God's way. And God will bless you. Because I'm talking about ungodly relationships. Sometimes, uh, I say relationships, some people within the context of the Bible, call it, some people call it soul ties, but I don't think it's actually in the Bible. It's like the uh, Trinity, uh, the, the God is in the Bible, but the Trinity may, may not be in the Bible, right? You know? But it's, it's like one of those implied things, you know, just, they call it soul ties. In other words, if you, uh, a man and a woman, I guess, uh, have relationships, and when you, I guess when you get together, you have a attachments, yeah, you have attachments within yourself, right? You know, attachments, whether it be, Inside the marriage, outside the marriage. That's why the, the men that go out and do things they're not supposed to do, they get attached to the wrong person. You might, that's why I wonder why when you go home sometimes you have these bad feelings, but it's depending on where you've been last night. You've been in different places sometimes. You go in there and get these spirits to get attached to your body. Okay. Is anybody understanding this? Yeah. 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 I don't know about you, but yeah. I was in California once upon a time, right? Yeah. I had some cousins come out to see me. Wow. I mean, really, my sister came out, and my cousin came out. They went inside by the casino. And I went to the casino. I thought it wouldn't hurt me. I just went, I just went inside the casino. I didn't have no plan to do anything. I walked inside the casino, and I just started feeling real bad. There's something like a heaviness, a weight out of my shoulder. I had to leave, you know? So there are those evil spirits you can feel them, you know? If you have God, you can feel those evil spirits. So I tell you, you you're better Christian, know it. you should be out in those bad places. You should be out in the clubs. You should be hanging out, stuff like that. But back to uh, soul ties, or if you want to call it relationships, basically it is an attachment between possibly a man and a woman, but also could be an attachment between friends. You know, you have a man, friend, a good friend, just a friend. They don't have to be nothing sexual in nature. But just because little kids probably saying, I don't have a girl, I'm 18 years old, I don't have a, I don't have a girlfriend. Oh, I do have a girlfriend. But guys that don't have a girlfriend, I don't have to get wife, you don't need a girlfriend right now. You say, the world's doing it, so I'm gonna do it, you know. I, I'm here to tell you, just because the world is saying something, just because your friends are doing it, it doesn't mean it's right. Say that. Say do what the Amen. Bible says. Amen. Do what the Bible says, instruction book for life, do what the Bible says, and you can't go wrong from it. Hmm. Yeah. Basically, we're still talking about, okay, but in, in Corinth, 1 Corinthians 7 and 2, if you might go back to it later on, to read uh, more information about these soul ties or ungodly relationships. It clearly states that sex before marriage is the definition of sexual immorality. All the Bible verses that condemn sexual immorality are being sinful and can condemn sex before marriage. You might be saying, uh, I'm not married, uh, I'm, I, I'm not married, but I just like, I, mean, I just like doing things sometimes, I'm not married, right? It's like, <laughs> when you're single out there, right? You're not supposed to, not supposed to do it. Okay, I put it this way, if you're a single, God or single woman right you know, if you're not married, you should have no kind of sex, nothing like that, nothing kind of that, basically, in a nutshell. But anyway, like, where this comes from is they got some kind of chemical, it's, they call it a similar chemical within the brain, it's called dopamine, you know, that's when you uh, have an emotional relationship or ties or friendships, you got a certain situation, you have a certain thing, you start with someone for years or something, you gotta get together with everybody, you know, or you don't get together with your friend, you have these emotional ties. I say these emotional ties, they tie you together. That's why the 
old people say that if you're a child with dogs, you please. In other words, watch the company you keep. In other words, no, no, no. Why can't you keep? Yeah, I do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and in the brain, I said, the body is a strange thing. You have, is you have a good relationship. You could be a female and say you get, uh, get raped or something, you know. And you don't know that person right now, but you go, go home a couple days, you have this funny thoughts in your mind, right, you know. Wow, this is some powerful stuff. And it's uh, this dopamine that gets in your system. You'll be attached to the person whether you know it or not. That's why I mentioned earlier, it's important if you go to all kinds of clubs and different things, if you go to the lion dance from time to time, you know, those spirits within that context of that place will get on you. So you need to avoid that. If you're a Christian, you need to come to church. And another problem we have, it's like a, I call it like a, it's a poison, you know, unforgiveness. <laughs> and a lot of people, they have unforgiveness. Hey, you say you forgive people, right? You know, like, like, I mean, I've been around a long time, I've been around a long time, but sometimes you forgive people, but you you just haven't really forgiven them, don't you? Yeah, you know, the reason I know about it, for example, if you say, if you had a game of a person, and you see the person again, came back and mentioned something, the person comes to your present, you see that person, they come to you like, when you see that person, you get mad. You're like, you can't stand, why am I mad about it? You know? <laughs> yeah, blow. It's probably something way deep down yeah. inside your body. Yeah, blow. You know, I give you an example. I have a, like I said, I work in real estate part time, from time to time. I was doing a, I had a rental house up in, in Austin, Illinois, something there, St. Louis. And I had to ask this guy to assist me. And I had to come back home, he was going to be pretty good. But I had to send the guy like $300 to, uh, to buy some stuff for the house. And he took the money, I guess, what happened, I didn't get the money back. I had seen a guy in like four or five years, coming home maybe two or three years later, right? I'm, I go into the house, take her to the house, and this guy walks up, you know, and, and the son came home with me. I don't know where it was. I don't know where it was. I didn't do anything, but I felt bad, I tell you. I tell you, I would, if I had some, I would kill the guy if I could. I don't know where it was. If something came inside of me, I don't know where it was. But tell you, watch out. So forgiveness, forgiveness is like a uh, passive over and some poison right there. It might not hurt you. So forgiveness is, it hurts you, not the other person. They might not even think about you. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. The last, and I said, these are strongholds. We have a good strongholds, a good bonds. We have not, not strong, we have good uh, spiritual things too. John, remember Jonathan and David? Yeah, Saul was uh, trying to kill David and Jonathan was his son. They was good friends together, right? You know, they was going to heal, actually kill him. But Jonathan was just telling David, hey, my father's going to do this, going to do that. So this is a good relationship, too. That's why I say, watch the company you keep. The last, uh, the last point I mentioned, I only had three points. The last point I had was about strongholds. You know, a stronghold, if you, you've probably been in the military, whatever, it's like a be like a fortress, if you go on top of like a, a big hill or something, you have a, a brick uh, barrier around the building. In other words, like in the military, you have a stronghold, something that can't nobody get to because it's well, well protected. I see you might have some several soldiers walking around that nobody can get to, but you have. But also, that's a, I mentioned a physical, that's a physical stronghold like that. But you also could have a, a mental stronghold too, you know, that's I mean, you know, stuff within you, within your mind, you know, it's this stuff. Stuff that it shouldn't be there. It's there. It might be resistance from the truth. Somebody comes to you and say, "Hey, Sister Betty, you know you're doing wrong." This Betty come back and say, "Hear me, Lord." Hey, I'm, when I'm doing the right, I know it's like, "Why is it right?" Because I said it's right. It feel good, so I'm going to do it. Well, okay. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to say that for example. Just some people resist the truth. You tell them, and tell them, and tell them, and they still won't do it. Amen. Hey, so I tell you to just pray for that person. That's it. Yeah. Hair flow. When I, I mentioned addictions earlier. You have all kinds of addictions. You have, um, mm -hmm. I, just, I just said addictions to me. <laughs> you have all kinds of addictions. But, you know, and just get attached to You have to a good addiction, a bad addiction, but chocolate is an addiction too. Oh, eat is an addiction. Like me, I can talk about you doing this, you doing that, brother side doing this, Susie doing this. But I like chicken wings sometimes. Most black folks like chicken wings, you know. So you eat that chicken. Your cholesterol is bad. It's bad. So when I talk about this change type stuff, right? You know, it's like when you check your cholesterol, your blood pressure, that's internal stuff for you, you know. It's like change. I want you to change from it within, not from out. Amen. I want you to get that everlasting change. Another thing is like, we talk, we talk about lust. I just say lust is to make it short. Cravings or desires is something you really don't need. You're craving someone, like someone craving something, something else. And pornography. I'm talking about pornography. I'm just watch out for the television. The girls and boys and men and women watch what you see on television. Because I was watching TV just like for, about four or five days ago. I'm not even, I was just 
I not only watch like TVN and Impact, different cracks, Christmas things, and I watch movies sometimes, and I turn TV on the middle of the night, and some sex scene comes up in the back, you know? Oh. <laughs> you, got, you gotta watch for some TV sometimes, you know? And pop me this group before you do it. Okay. I kept like, kept looking at it, kept looking at it, like, I turned it off, and it says, watch what you see on TV, watch what happens at work, you watch this stuff. Oh, okay. Anyway, I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you all been in this boat, they got you sitting here before you and you go to your friend's house for a party or something or a weekend or something, you know, stuff on TV, you don't want to go on TV, you say, oh, that's on TV, what's that? What? Just, what's up? What are you supposed to do? Walk out of the room? We probably should, but I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, we have greed, you know, you have greed, you have greed, you want money, you have a good job, you want more. Like some Michael Bieber before you too long, um, you got stomach problems and everything. But talk about greed, talk about pride. You know, pride is a, uh, you know, pride is, pride is a big thing. You know, what does it say? Uh, money is love, money is the root of all evil. I wouldn't say pride is that, but pride is up there with that. Pride is a powerful thing. It makes you, you, know, you got pride. You live on a house, you live on a street with a house, you have a nice house. Pride wants you to go out and get a better house. You got a hundred thousand dollar salary, right? Your neighbor has a hundred two thousand dollar salary. You want to get better than him, you got pride, it makes you want to do things. It's bringing home to the new beginnings church. You got pride, you're in that, I sing in the choir, right, you know? This baby, but I'm going to sing real good, right, you know? You want to sing better than she do. <laughs> Are you in the, in the past in the pulpit? Uh, Pastor Bowman preaches good, you want to preach better than you do because of pride, you know? I'm afraid I don't need pride, so pride is the cause of a lot of different Jesus. things. Yes, it cause of the nation, Amen. Good things. Amen. You're a single, a single woman, a single man. Pride to make another man take your man, or another woman take your woman. They don't want your man or that woman. They want to take him just to see if they get him or not. You they better say away. it. So pride is a dangerous thing. Yeah. And you don't believe in that. It was, it was Satan that kicked out of heaven because of pride. That's it. Yeah. It's your name. It's a fact. It's a fact. It's a fact. Okay, and uh, second Corinthians, verse 3 through 5, it says, I'll just read it to you. I said, we're talking about a lot of uh, spiritual warfare and pride and fortress or something. But a lot of the battles we fight are not really physical battles. They're spiritual. So, 2 Corinthians 10 and 3 through 5 reads, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of a warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Casting down arguments and every high thing that has lost itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. You see, a lot of the stuff that happens to us happens in our minds. So the mind is a powerful thing. So when you feed your mind, feed your mind with good stuff, positive stuff, Christian stuff. And then, back in another good example of, I guess, Spiritual warfare, you know, sometimes we like we got, we, got, we like to fight and everything, you know, we're all oh, good and buff. Yeah, got that CC back there, you look pretty buff, you, you're pretty much the same, right? You can come out and fight you can be somebody down. But sometimes when it comes to fight, right, you know, we're going to have like a, a spiritual warfare, you got to fight, fight with your mind sometimes. Yeah. Fight, with, fight with your mind. I'm not saying you know, but fight with your mind. I say fight with your mind, we're talking about uh, and Joshua. Uh, you know Joshua, remember the story of Joshua? There was a war, he wanted to tear down. Yeah. Uh, Joshua, Joshua 6. We had Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. Woman, Joshua. What basically in a nutshell, uh, God told Joshua that he would give him the city. If God tell you something, he's gonna do it. It's money in the bank. Hey, he said to uh, Yeah, he, he said, he said connect to God. He said, he said, go around the go around the wall one time for six days. I imagine I read somewhere on the internet about by eight point five I guess or acres or whatnot for it. Go around the wall one time for six days. When God tells you something, you gotta follow his instructions. I understand what he tells you, what he tells you, but just follow his instructions and have faith, you know. And, and he had on the seventh seven, seven day, that seventh day that seventh priest, they had the ark the trumpets. He said go around the wall seven times on the seventh day. But also, before God told him to go around the wall, he gave him some instructions. He said to be quiet. He said, be quiet. Some people have a problem with be quiet. So sometimes be quiet and let the line of God and follow God's word. Be quiet and listen sometimes. He said on this seventh day he'll blow the trumpet with the ram's horn. And they shouted and welcome coming down. I've been talking about walls, portraits, and scripture strongholds. If you have a wall in your life, it might not be a physical wall, it might be a mental wall, but if you follow God's plan, the wall will come down like the Jericho wall came down. 
And I said, if it, you have a, I'm in the military myself. We have battles, physical battles. We have a, what we call it, M16 We have some powerful guns. It takes everything. We're pretty much the most powerful military in the world. But some battles, some battles you can't solve with physical means. You have spiritual battles to get solved with God. Amen. And if you want to fight this battle, I'm talking about this battle is from Ephesians. It's talking about being prepared, having the equipment that God gives you. So fighting with military tanks and military weapons, you're gonna fight with God's equipment, fight with what God gives you. God gives you armor, he gives you something to go on. It's like you how to do it, it's like you gotta do it. You gotta follow God's ways. Always sometimes God's ways don't seem you might not seem like the right way. You might understand it, but follow God's ways. You always come out on top. Amen. I'm in Ephesians, I'm in Ephesians, uh, these six chapter, you can read that and give you a note so you go home you say, one thing he talks about, I remember that one thing, Ephesians, what was he talking about? So this is a reference for you go back home and look at it, you know. Anyway, it says, if we're in Ephesians 6 chapter, 11, it says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the waters of the devil. To put on the whole armor of God. I said, if you, in military, you have a, uh, some stuff to wear, put on the whole armor. Otherwise, put everything on, but just put it one thing on, one of two things. In other words, if you're a Christian, don't just pray, don't just do this, do that. You gotta put on the whole, do everything God wants you to do. Just follow the whole thing. Verse 7 says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The devil, the, the devil says, I think John 10, 10 says, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The God. But verse 12, for we, we are not to wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against the power, against the rulers of the darkness. We're wrestling against the devil. And we're, we're, you're not match for the devil by yourself. You think you are, but you're not. You can be smart, but you're not smart enough to go against the devil. Unless, of course, you got God. Unless you that change of mind. Yes. Verse. Well, I'm talking to you about change and the good armor of God, but you need to have the armor of God on. You need the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness. You want to stand firm, shout your feet, put on the shield of faith. And have a salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the Bible. But most of all, you need prayer. I tell you, it's time for a change. Be like Paul mm. on the Damascus Road. He changed from being what he was to being a born again Christian. Amen. Stop beating down people with the Bible. Run from those ungodly relationships. Remove the strongholds. Put on the strong armor of God. I tell you, saints, it's time. For a change. Amen. It's time for a change. There might be somebody.